This is an abridged live stream of David from Wallfire Coding for the Humble Bundle Mojam charity event. In this event, Mojang, Oxi and Wallfire streamed the creation of 60-hour game prototypes to raise money for charity. David used Unity so that viewers could easily try WIP builds of the game while watching the stream. Unfortunately he did not really know how to use Unity, so he frequently had to look at documentation and sample projects. The assigned theme was Ancient Egyptian Steampunk Real-Time Strategy Shoot 'em Up. So Wolfire decided to make a game about steam-driven tank trains fighting robot scorpions in the sand dunes of an Egyptian desert. To do this, David started by trying to make a box move around on the screen. Then he made it fire cannonballs from each side. He simulated recoil for the cannonballs by tilting the box whenever it fired a broadside. Lunch. Using SFX at and the free trial of Reaper, he made some terrible sound effects. Train needed something to shoot at, so he started working on some human-sized target boxes. These human-sized target boxes swarmed the train box like a horde of ravenous zombies. Aubrey created the train model using a unique 3D pixel art style, so David had to figure out how to render it in Unity. He found a free sand texture on the internet, and made it tileable by enhancing it with Adobe Photoshop software. The broadsides looked a bit dull, so he added a simple muzzle flash particle effect, as well as a ground impact flash. It was hard to see where the cannonballs were in space, so he added a shadow directly below them. Dinner. Now the broadsides looked a lot better. Next he created a simple physics engine so that trains could attach to one another with angular spring constraints. This took a while. C C C C C C. Aubrey made a whole bunch of new 3D models, so David replaced the man-sized target boxes with the robot scorpion. Anton Real created some amazing music from scratch, including the songs in the background of this presentation, so David added it to the game. Aubrey created an 8-bit steampunk heads-up display. So David tried to figure out how to handle GUI elements and Unity. Aubrey also created an intro splash screen in several layers, so David used them to make a layered animation. T. Next he investigated collision detection and response to see if the native Unity physics could be adapted to work with the trains. He decided to make his own system instead. This took a while. Aubrey made a whole bunch of new 3D models but David still had not completely finished with the robot scorpion. Dinner. David hooked up animation and movement AI to the scorpions, as well as particle effects for attacking and dying. He also added heat damage to the train, so it would glow red hot and then shut down. He then hooked up burning frames for the crew in the HUD. The train was designed to be viewed from up close, so he tried out some closer camera angles. 
He then started working on adding an enemy train, and adding flame effects for damaged trains. Lunch. Viewers had a lot of suggestions, so he compiled them into a to-do list. He made the gauges work, to display speed, heat, and damage. B -R -B. He then added enemy train AI, so you could have train duels. Train duels should end in big explosions, so he added a new sound and particle effect for dying trains. Aubrey added color to all the models, so David added color to the effects to match. He also hooked up some sound details by Anton, such as happy music cues when enemies are defeated, and sad ones when you die. After adding increasing waves of difficulty, that was the end of the 60 hours, so he had to stop. Everyone accepted this restriction very gracefully. Thanks for screwing thousands of humble bundle users and especially Aubrey who and like you actually the weekend, they had raised $4,508,229 and were successful at creating three very buggy half big poor excuses for video games that under normal circumstances would never see the light of day. Good job I everyone. my penny back. This was stupid. Well, most people understood the time restriction and that 100% of the profits went directly to charity. All of the Broadside Express source code, project files, and assets are available for anyone to continue where we left off. Thank you for watching this abridged live stream of David from Wolfire Coding for the Humble Bundle Mojam charity event. Good day.